Here we're going to build a grouped frequency table using the data set of NBA players with their points per game shown below. So we have 30 values ranging from 1.4 up to about 24. And we're told to use a class width of 5 for our grouped frequency table. So we want to start low enough that we can cover all of them. And rather than starting at 1, let's start at 0 just to get a nice round number and make it easy for ourselves. So in our frequency table, the first column will be points per game. And our first category, the first class, will start at 0. And we'll go up to 5. But remember, we won't go all the way to 5 because we don't want to overlap our classes. So the first one's going to go up to just less than 5. Let's use 4.9 to represent just less than 5. And then the next one will start at 5.0 and go up to 10, but just below 10, so we'll stop at 9.9. .9. And then we'll go from 10 to 14.9, 15 to 19.9, and 20 to 24.9. We don't need any more classes because that's as high as we need to go to cover everyone in this data set. So the next column will be the frequency, and then lastly we'll have the relative frequency. Since there are 30 values here in our data set, once we have the frequencies, we'll just divide each one by 30 to get the relative frequency. We won't show this in detail for all of these classes, but just for the first class, from 0 to 4.9, we'll go through and select all the ones that fit into that category. So between 0, 0.0 and 4.9, in the first row, we find 4.9. In the second row, we find 1.4 and 2.0. And in the third row, we find 3.0, 4.3, and that looks like all of them. So there are a total of five that fall into that range. And then we can continue this on for all the others, but I won't show the counting. You can go through and do that yourself, and I'll show you the results here. So once you count all the others, you should get 11 for the second class, 5 for the third class, 4, and then 5 for the final class. Then if we divide each of these by 30 to get the relative frequency, 5 divided by 30 is 0 0.16 repeating. So you can round that to 0.167 or 16.7%. And then 11 out of 30, we could round to 36.7%. 5 out of 30 again is 16.7%. And then 4 out of 30 we could round to 13.3% to get the relative frequency for each. So it's really just counting. The only thing to keep track of for grouped frequency tables is to make sure your classes are all evenly wide and that none of them overlap. That's the important piece.